means the air who is the wind okay so let's begin with the esoteric aspects of the libra ascendant esoteric meaning harmonization of duality through the establishment of right relationship relationship plays is a key word plays a very predominant role for the libra ascendant it's everything for them having a proper relationship if they don't have a proper relationship their harmony in their sense of this world is kind of destroyed so they seek in good relationship they will carry the higher aspects of venus because it's the air sign to all the 12 houses we'll see this the keynote for the soul is i choose the way that leads between two great lines of force collapsing duality again harmonization of duality that's what libra and ascendant seek to accomplish here the soul race third will to manipulate and adapt karma and law third soul mantra is purpose itself am i soul colors of forest green this is good for them vedic aspects rajas movable and male it's a male sign it wants to go outward into accomplishing things it's movable it, that's why the wind this is another air sign the first one was being gemini which is ruled by mercury this is ruled by venus sign lord is venus so the difference between the first and air sign is gemini was breeze this is the wind it blows fast it wants to move quickly it's a very quick sign <clears throat> and it's rajas rajas has got fire in it it wants to create with things with passion sign lord mercury exaltation saturn why because libra wants to do for the other it's all about that right relationship we spoke of so exaltation saturn is exalted wherever it wants to do do things work for others and therefore sun is debilitated which only wants things for itself like leo type is karma which is desire so they are very desire oriented people ruled by venus obviously but it's the higher aspect of venus it's not the venus like taurus which wants to solidify everything in fixed assets money looking for material gains these people look for emotional gain everywhere that's the higher aspect of desire okay so now libra ascendant looks like that now we have the seventh in venus stuck in the head but this venus which is stuck in the head is more of the air part of venus the etheric aspects of venus the the more higher emotional sensitive aspects of venus so that's what this libra ascendant will carry to all the rest of the houses that energy of venus and because another house of venus is sitting in the 8 these people always typically very interested in occult because the same venus energy is over here in the house of occult tantra etc occult matters more than spirituality they are more towards occult Let's, let's see how it plays out the self personality is always seeking balance in life weighing all relationships on a scale the libra stands for the scale checking for balance in all things of life they have a very liberal attitude accepting and open minded because they don't like strife venus being in the first and the higher aspect of venus looks for harmony first that's the harmonization which we saw libra is seeking harmony So that's why they have a liberal attitude they are very accepting and open minded they are fond of luxury cars beautiful homes interested in the mysteries of life occult we saw in the 8th house wanting to be of service sophisticated good mannerism people they like to be pleasant personalities and these people are the visionaries of the 12 zodiac signs they are great visionaries they see the overview of everything of large picture of humanity relationships with all people become the focus in all areas of their life <clears throat> second house is scorpio family wealth siblings elder siblings so what happens to their family life they are very protective of family family wealth emotional attachment with family closely guarding family secrets why is that we have scorpio here hidden secrets in the family very protective of elder siblings if they have one drive to make wealth for themselves and family they have a drive to do that can have very cutting fierce speech with siblings and family that can hurt sometimes because of mars and scorpio 
They may even break up with their elder siblings later in life. Again, because of some fight, Scorpio won't take things sitting down. They'll either yes or no and cut it off. It's a very karmic sign. Third house, the house of skills, younger siblings, communication, speech, etc. So conversation because it's Jupiter in Sag. These people will always be philosophical with family and friends and younger siblings because third house also is for younger siblings. Could be positive or negative depending upon where the planets are placed. The love for taking short journeys. Why? Because in Sag, Jupiter loves to take journeys being in the ninth house but now in the third it becomes short journeys every now and then love for traveling is there with these people they love to travel they have a soft speech philosophical affection for younger siblings again Jupiter in Sag teaching them wisdom interested in traditional esoteric knowledge in very early years these people will be interested in whatever faith and of esoteric knowledge they are born into any faith that may be from a young age they may read lots of books on the subject, culture, religion, and have friends interested in religion and spirituality. In the fourth house of home and mother, however, they have Saturn with Capricorn, which is all about work. So the home becomes work. Home life very disciplined, structured, fixed, routines. We have a Saturnian mother, a tiger mom. May turn against the family at some point because of this. Because they find home environment to be very restricted, they may turn against the family. Uh, children or home become feel like work to them. Effort in relationships at home. They have a very pessimistic view of home and family. Why? Because Capricorn is uh, there and Saturn is here in the fourth house, where it should be in the tenth. This is exactly opposite of Aries. Every house is opposite of Aries being in the seventh house. Aries being in the first sign and Libra being in the seventh, everything is opposite. In the fifth house, we have Saturn in Aquarius, so which is unconventional. Again, work will be involved in education, children, romance, and love. Innovative and disciplined approach with kids and upbringing, bringing up children who become liberal because they are liberal people themselves, rebellious because there is Saturn here and unconventional, unorthodox, because it's Aquarius. Cause and effect may have unorthodox spirits, liberal, they love to bring up kids in unorthodox ways, but practical. Right? So, in the sixth house, we have Pisces, Jupiter, but in Pisces, in the house of any media work. Now, being a liberal, again, you carry that Venusian attitude of softness, they have very less enemies. They are very diplomatic at work, born diplomats. Liberals make excellent diplomats because they are with, it's within them to create and look for peace. Always looking for a peaceful solution to disputes and fights at work. Mahatma Gandhi was a liberal ascendant. So that's how he always looked for non-violent peaceful solutions. Finding meaning through service to people. Philosophical approach towards work. Doing good for people. Making warring parties come and talk compromise, come to the table, talk it out. They are, however, a bit careless about wealth because Pisces is a little dreamy. These people, therefore, with their Venusian qualities, they make great counsellors, diplomats, visionary leadership for nations. Like I said, Mahatma Gandhi was a Libran ascendant, visionary. So, next one, we have the house of spouse, which is dominated by Mars and Aries. So, they might have a very aggressive, individualistic, reckless spouse, self-centered spouse, who may be physically athletic, physically active, wanting independence. Spouse considers intimate aspects more central than emotional connect. They may not have any much of emotional connect based spouse, because... Mars knows only aggression and physical activity. It does not know softness. Whereas Librans, poor people, they have Venus in the ascendant. So they might have lots of spite fights with spouse in marriage. Since they are liberal and spouse is selfish, this is the opposite duality that Librans deal with. In the eighth house, there is Taurus in Venus, the earthly sign in an occult. So what happens, because they have Venus also in the ascendant, these people become very inclined towards occult. They have a connect with earthly fire of Kundalini energy. They can become good 
meditators they can have good knowledge of mantras and things of shamanic nature of earthly shamanic nature of kundalini energy fire energy earthly fire they can have a good connect with them they can even make excellent shamans so spirituality to occult earthly tantric energy may inherit wealth from marriage after in laws because this house of also in laws and taurus is very earthly sign depends upon where the planets are placed though wealth fluctuation and may have wealth fluctuation to periods in life why because the eighth house is a house of fluctuations ups and downs which they may not like because there is taurus wants fixed things occult as a means to accomplish fixed assets materialistic views so they might do mantras and everything to gain wealth you have to avoid this approach okay this is not the way to go about getting wealth if you want wealth earn it <coughs> Ninth house has got the mind, the wavering Mercury in Gemini, the religion high knowledge. So, as a result of this, and this is also the house of foreign travels, they love going abroad. They may go internationally regularly. Natural born travelers, connecting with different cultures of different lands. Why? Because it's Venus in Libra. Higher philosophical conversation in daily lives. Conversation, Mercury. They are visionaries talking of society, community and large world ideas. Tenth house of career has cancer in it. Therefore, these people can make good people in hospitality business. Why hospitality? The Venus in Ascendant wants to be hospitable. Libras want to give things. They make diplomats, pharmacists, doctors. Moon in cancer is a significator of medical profession. Doctors, dentists, surgeons. Also, they can be chefs, artists, political leaders. So they are very diverse kind of um, mindset and because they have a balance between mind and heart. They can think from both ends. So they need careers where they can make emotional connect with people. This is the key. Serve people. Leaders love serving people. Amiable personalities at work. Innovative at work. They are great visionaries ahead of their time. Love to work from home and constantly changing ups and downs in careers. Why this? Because moon in cancer. Moon wants to be at home. Moon doesn't want to be in an office cubicle. So these people is very good for them to work from home. Especially with what's going on now, they are loving it. Number 11, the house of gains. The house of social media, social networks. Now you have Sun and Leo. So they want seeking center, seeking to be the center of attraction in social circles, seeking popularity attention, admiration, gains and money through social media and vast social circles. So these people can be members of hundreds of groups on Facebook, for example, because they are very active. They are seeking their popularity through social media, through large networks. That's why they can take up careers in government. They can take up an authority position, military service, making great leaders. Military leaders, not the warrior Warrior is the Mars. These people are the generals because they have to take care of a large group of people. Leadership qualities. Also, they can be very choosy about friends. Leo is very specific about their friends. The twelfth house of spirituality and losses has Mercury in Virgo, so they are very calculated. Virgo comes in wherever there is calculation. So they are calculated service. As in, even if they are giving service, or charity, they will think, what will I gain in return? I'll make some good karmas out of it. Or I'll gain some good feeling inside me. Everything is calculated from the way they approach spirituality. Also, because Virgo is an earth sign, they have ability to tap into the dream world. Exalted Mercury kind of. They get a little exalted Mercury in an earthly way. Ability to translate spiritual to reasoning, logical minds. So they can translate a highly esoteric subject into earthly usable format. It makes them very unique. They can write spiritual books maybe. So this is my perspective on Libra and Ascendant. As usual we got to see where some planets are posited in different houses to make an accurate assessment of what your personality is like. So you can get in touch with me on facebook.com progressive guidance. Take care. Bye bye.